The boys salvage a split in the I-70 series thanks to another stellar outing from Miles Michaelis. It's time to put some respect on this man's name. This is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Happern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio and follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcast. Other places as well, including YouTube. If you haven't joined us on YouTube yet, be sure to like and subscribe and comment. That way you're interacting with us. Hit the notification button so you know when those new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation, giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Today's episode is being brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more by visiting FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. So beginning today, the Cardinals have... Back-to-back scheduled days off for the first time, excluding All-Star breaks, since September 27th and 28th of 1978, when they had a two-day break in the schedule in New York City due to Shea Stadium, the old home of the Mets, being used as a dual-purpose stadium for both the NFL's Jets and the Mets. Been a while since this has happened. So we're going to talk about what got us up to this point, more specifically the the month of May. We're going to break down pitching and stuff today. We'll talk more about the hitters tomorrow, but let's get back to last night's game, okay? Tuesday night's game. It was another dull and boring offensive game for the Redbirds, something we've unfortunately have gotten used to over the last week or so. But uh, Tuesday night at Bush Stadium, not great offensively, but... On a night like this where the where the offense could only muster two runs on five hits, I know you're normally thinking, well, that's a loss. Chalk it up. Ching. Not this time. Not this time. Not on Tuesday with Mr. 5280s taking the mound. Now, for those of you who are unaware of what the 5280 nickname for Miles Michaelis is, I'll explain it to you. Um, I personally wasn't made aware of this until I actually saw it pop up on the video game MLB The Show 23, which I play religiously love it michaelis got a new card recently on the game and it featured the name mr 5280 and i'm like what i don't understand that i scratched my head i was like what the heck is this about i figured lizard king would be a great nickname that that he would choose for this but uh the reason apparently that he was given this name is because there are 5280 feet in a mile get it I guess he used that as well in 2018 for the players' weekend jerseys. I I don't remember that, honestly. But there you go, Mr. 5280. Anywho, it was a good thing that Miles was on the mound last night because he's the guy, out of all of the starters that you have assembled, that you believe can actually pull off a victory when the team doesn't hardly score. And he did exactly that last night, firing eight shutout innings against the Royals while punching out 10. He left the game in the eighth inning after 102 pitches. Giovanni Gallegos comes in. And as usual, it wouldn't be a Cardinals game if there wasn't some sort of drama at some point or another. Uh, This team never seems to be able to make things go easy. Uh, They always got us biting our fingernails and stressing out until the very last out is recorded. Gio comes in, gives up a double, then a single, which brought the go-ahead run to the plate. But then he got a ground out, then a fly out, and then a strikeout to end the game. Everyone (sighs) exhales. Cardinals win it 2-1. to And the uh, 19 games and 19 day stretch comes to a close. We're going to talk more about not specifically those 19 days, but the like last two weeks of this team. Uh, We're going to jump into that a little bit later, but let's focus on how good Miles Michaelis has been. Shall we? Um, Miles, by the way, the picture on YouTube that I have posted, I have no idea what he's doing there, giving a peace sign and Looks like he's vomiting. I don't know. But if you're on YouTube, I'm sorry, but that picture made me laugh. Anyway, uh, let's focus on Miles because coming into the season, I was telling anyone who was listening, 
my everydayers can back me up on this one on how underrated Miles Michaelis is in the grand scheme of Major League Baseball. You're never going to hear Miles Michaelis' name mentioned among the great pitchers in the league. You're just not. I gave you the stats to back it up. Why he belongs up near the top with some of the best in baseball. A stellar first season with the Cardinals, then a not so great year. Then you had the injuries, but then he got healthy again. And as soon as he was feeling better, he's back representing the National League in the All Star game. And sure, the All Star game sees a lot of people drop out, especially pitchers who aren't able to throw because of where their spot is in the rotation, maybe do, dealing with some sore. It, plenty of reasons why the pitchers drop out. And I totally understand why they do. But Miles deserved to be there in 2018. Heck, he finished sixth in the NL Cy Young voting that year, and he deserved to be there last year. And after the shaky start to the year where everything was falling against him, a lot of weak contact, and I know it sounds like an excuse, but it's real. And you know it's real. Like, if you watch those games at the beginning of the year, Miles Michaelis, he, he wasn't getting teed off on all the time. A lot of balls were just finding holes and little patches of grass, and it was just annoying about all of these different types of hits falling in against him. It, it, it was it was frustrating, for sure. And he admitted as much that it had frustrated him. But uh, the guy kept working. He stayed focused, and May has been outstanding for him. He's been one of the best pitchers in the league. March and April, he goes 1-1 one one with an ERA of 5.97. He gives up 45 hits in 31 and two-thirds innings, which leads to 22 runs, and he gives up six home runs. And just ugly numbers all around for sure. And with him just getting the extension this spring, man, were the haters out in full force right away this year, just demolishing Miles and Mo and this organization for, for giving him the money, even though, my opinion, it was the smart thing to do. When he's healthy, Miles Michaelis has been very, very good for you. So I thought it was a good idea. They didn't overpay, in my opinion. And in the month of May, he's responding the way winners normally do in six starts. He goes 3-0 and with an ERA of 1.89. Uh, he is allowing, in the month of May, where'd he go here? He allowed uh, just 30 hits in 38 innings. When I say just 30 hits, that's kind of, I shouldn't have said it that way. 30 hits in 38 innings is not very good, but only eight runs. That's good. Two home runs, much better than he did last month. And per usual, Miles doesn't walk a lot of people. Nine in the first month, just six in May. He strikes out exactly 29 in both months. And the most important stat is that the team went 5-1 and one in his starts in May. So how does Miles compare to the rest of the league over the month of May? Today is the last day, but as of right now, looking at the stats today, before any games get played tonight, here's what we got. Michaelis' three wins is the second most in the league. There are multiple pitchers who had four, but he got three. You know who else had three wins this month, by the way? Ryan Helsley. Ryan Helsley, the closer. Didn't see that coming, did you? Uh, his 1.89 ERA, currently fifth in the entire league for the month of May, trailing former Cardinal and now Padre Michael Waka, uh, the Rangers' Nathan Evaldi, the Giants' Logan Webb, and the Braves' Bryce Elder. Uh, he's second in innings pitch behind another former Cardinal, Sandy Alcantara, who, by the way, have you guys seen Sandy's numbers this year? I don't have him in fantasy league, so I don't constantly look at what he's doing, but I kind of looked at him here when I was looking at Miles' numbers. I'm like, oh. So the reigning NL Cy Young Award winner, Sandy Alcantara, who was incredible last year, is now 2-5 and five this year. His ERA at 4.93. Walks are up. Strikeouts are down. He's allowed 38 earned runs so far this season. He allowed 58 all last year. All last year. He's already up to 38. So Sandy's struggling, man. Uh, Michaelis is whipped, though. Back to the guy we're talking about. 0 0.95 for the month. That's top 15. Opponents hit just 213 against him. That's top 20 in the league. He's been great. He has been great. Has given up a run in his last two outings. Granted, that's against the Reds and the Royals, although the Reds have played much better recently. But still, these are major league hitters. The Royals just got seven runs off the Cardinals the night before. So it's not like they just walk up there and can't hit. I'm not saying that Miles Michaelis is an ace. That's not what I'm saying. But imagine if the Cardinals somehow, some way, find that ace, pair him with Michaelis as your number two, and then for the rest of the season, you've got Flaherty, Montgomery, Wainwright, and Libertor to finish out the year. I don't hate that. Easier said than done. But a guy can dream, can he? Let me dream.
Anyway, we're going to run down more about what we witnessed over the last couple of weeks, okay? And in this month of May. We're going to get to all of that for the pitchers coming up next on Locked on Cardinals. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500. I'll repeat it. $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet does not win. A little insurance there. Uh, the NBA Finals are set. Number one seed Denver Nuggets will uh, be taking on the Miami Heat. Nikola Jokic, incredible. Greatest second-round pick ever. Taking on uh, the number eight seed Miami Heat, who have had a grueling, grueling uh, stretch to get to like where they are in the finals. Like they, they have gone through hell and back to get to this part. But um, on paper, I, I got the Nuggets in five. That, that's just me personally. I don't know that much about the NBA. I'll watch, but that's what I'm going with. I, I think the Nuggets should be able to take down Miami pretty easily, especially after everything Miami's had to go through and how many games they've had to play to get to the finals. So, But you can watch and make some money while you're watching it. Have a little more fun by getting the FanDuel app and placing some bets. It's safe, secure. New promotions every day on FanDuel. Plus, you get paid instantly. You don't have to wait around to get your money. As soon as you win, boom, you get paid right away. Simple. No better place to bet all on, the, on all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. The Cardinals have today and tomorrow off and are in Pittsburgh beginning on Friday. You can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. For my everydayers, stick around tomorrow. We are going to take a look at the hitting side of the month of May. So uh, we know they've had some struggles, but it wasn't as bad as everybody thinks. It's just been bad recently. You know, they, they've just worn down and in the last week. They've done almost nothing, but the month of May wasn't as shabby as you may think. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Staying focused on the pitching here today, the Cardinals were 10 and 19 in the first month of the season. A lot of bad baseball went down. It made most of us sick to our stomach to watch it because it definitely was not what we call Cardinal baseball. You know, it, it was riddled with bad pitching, lackluster hitting, egregious defensive mistakes out in the field on the base paths. It's just something that this franchise has not witnessed very often, okay? And if you've been around since the, the Cardinals have been really, really good in the 2000s, then you've never seen anything like that, where they've been that bad. Um, it really didn't have anywhere else to go but up, you know? I, I feel like they hit bottom, rock bottom, and started to pull their way out of it after the first week in May. Credit to the team, and whether you want to say it or not, Credit to the coaching staff and manager, Ali Marmel. I know you're throwing things at the screen or whatever you're listening to. You're like, no, I hate him. They got things sorted out. They got moving in the right direction. So give them a little credit. But I want to stay focused on the pitching today, which we, we knew was going to be an issue this year. And it still is. In the first months of March and April, they played 29 games and the team ERA was 4.56. They allowed 136 runs. 128 of those that earned, uh, 262 hits, 33 home runs. They walked 105 batters. Opponents rating 268, on base percentage at 340, slugging at 438, OPS 778. Not great. Not great numbers. Uh, in the month of May, they played 28 games. So think about that. Remember that one less game, but the team ERA is at 4.30, which is an improvement. They allowed 130 runs, 120 of them earned. That's an improvement. 264 heads, which is more than last month. 25 home runs. That's an improvement. Walk 94. That's an improvement. Opponents hit 269. Nice. But that's about the same as last month. OBP 339, about the same. Slugging 418. That's an improvement. OPS 757. That's an improvement. So what do all those numbers mean? If you're not a baseball nerd, you're like, what the hell are you talking about, J.D.? Basically, what those numbers tell us is this Cardinals pitching staff is still getting hit. It's still giving up hits, but not as much damage is being done when they are getting hit. That's what it tells us. Now, also remember the Cardinals still sucked 
in the first week of May. Like it was really bad still losing five straight in the back end of the eight game losing streak. So what I wanted to do next was take it down to the last couple of weeks where they went eight, and six team ERA over that time, 3.96, which is 13th best in the league, 62 runs, 55 earned, which is the eighth highest in the league. Uh, hits are at 130, which is the fourth highest. That's not great. Home runs though, down, way down. That is the third lowest amount for the month. So that's a huge improvement. Walks are the seventh highest at 46. Batting average against 265, which is the sixth highest. Uh, OBP is at 334. Slugging at 401. OPS 735. So those numbers are all improvements than what the full month of May shows you. But none of that is great. <laughs> none of that it really says, woo, here we go. We're really good all of a sudden. Because we're not. The Cardinals pitching staff is not that great. They just don't miss enough bats. And that's what we thought the problem was going to be this year. And that was part of the thing that they kind of built. Remember? They were like, we want pitchers who will allow the defense to take the pressure off the pitching staff. We want them to put the ball in play. Hit those ground balls. We've got gold glovers all over the place. So many that we're now throwing them in the outfield. <laughs> I know people hate it, um, but they wanted to improve on that. They wanted more strikeouts and the, the front office even pointed that out. We need more swing and miss stuff on the staff. And it's, it's just not happening. It's just not happening. Jordan Montgomery regressed massively in the month of May, six starts in April, 3.34 ERA. Remember tough luck. Was pitching so well, but couldn't get any wins because the Cardinals weren't hitting when he would pitch. Then in May, his ERA is at 6.04. He's pitched about 10 less innings than he did in April, yet he's given up the same amount of hits, more runs, 17 to 14, and home runs have jumped from one to six. Steven Matt's ERA was actually better in May <laughs> than April. If you can believe that, ERA 6.23 in April down to five in May. He's still terrible. And I, I'm, I don't want to pick on the guy. Everybody knows he's having a tough year. He doesn't need to be in this rotation anymore. At least not for now. He just doesn't. I think you've got to let Matthew Libertor cook. See if he belongs in your major league rotation. Give him a try. And you have to actually give him a try. You can't give him three starts and then say, eh. no, you let him, let him have a couple of weeks here. Give him at least five starts and see what he's got. And if he doesn't live up to what you want him to be, and you think Steven Matz is a better person to put in the rotation, then you can make the move. But don't screw around with him and put him in the bullpen. Do not do that. Send him back to Memphis and let him continue to be a starter. You put him in that bullpen, and we will find you. Us as Cardinals fans, locked on Cardinals fans, we'll find you. And we'll make you pay for that. Because that's a terrible idea. Don't do that. Idiotic. Uh, Jack Flaherty's ERA went from 3.94 in April to 5.88 in May. Whoa, right? Opponents hit 225 against him last month in May, 303. But remember, he did have that real ugly game against the Angels on May 4th, where they just tattooed him. What was it, like nine or 10 runs over two innings? So, something crazy. So those numbers are all inflated. In his last four games, Jack Flaherty has gone 1-0, but the team has won all four of those starts, and his ERA is a 2.66, with opponents hitting 247 against him. Jack Flaherty has improved massively over the last couple of weeks. Adam Wainwright, God bless the man. We all love him, right? He is not very good. 2-1, ERA at 6.15. Hasn't made it through six innings yet in a game, and opponents are hitting, you ready for this? 325 against him. 325. Whoa. That's not good. But what are you going to do with him? You can't, you're not going to put him in the bullpen. He's just got to get better. And that's just the starting rotation, okay? We're going to look at the bullpen next on Locked on Cardinals, where Ryan Helsley specifically has taken a major step back this season. We'll talk about it next on Locked on Cardinals.
The Cardinals head to Pittsburgh this weekend, and you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Ryan Helsley was incredible last year. Incredible. You see his numbers, and they, they, they pop off the page of how amazing he was. Did we think he was going to continue at that level? I mean, we were hoping, weren't we? But probably not. I'm sure some regression was expected. That's how good he was last year. But not like this. Not like this. He is not even in the same stratosphere of what he did last year. Now, for those of you who don't know or don't remember, Ryan Helsley last year had a 9-1 and record with a 1.25 ERA and a whip of 0.742. Incredible. Maybe all-star team. Was smoking just about anyone in his path. He got on that mound. Game over. Hell's Bells comes in. Closes it out. You're done. But then he hurt his finger against the Pirates. And then he had the meltdown against the Phillies in the Wild Card Series. And he has not been the same guy since. This year, Ryan Helsley is 3-4 and four with a 3.52 ERA and a whip at 1.261. Those are not the worst numbers you've ever seen. Like, if you put those numbers on a normal relief pitcher, you're like, okay, I'll live with that. But that is so far down from what we saw last year. Strikeout rate down from almost 40% last year to 30 this year. His walk rate up from 8.4% to 11.3. It is never good when those flip places. Really, really bad. Uh, his batting average on balls in play last year, 185. This year, 309. So when he is getting hit, they're finding holes. He gave up nine earned runs last year in 64.2 thirds innings. So I don't know why I put the point in there, but nine earned runs last year in 64 and two thirds innings. He's already given up nine this season in just 23 innings. He's blown four saves, which is tied for second most in the league. And when that's your best reliever, that's going to be a problem. That's a problem. And the biggest peeve about what's going on with Ryan Helsley this year is the walks. If you watch this show, my everydayers know, I can't stand it when you give up walks. I hate walks. I would rather see you give up a, a double in the gap or even a solo shot than to just throw the ball all over the place and not even make a competitive pitch in and at bat and walk people and continually walk people drives me nuts it drives your defense nuts because they're just standing there just wasting away it's it's a horrible feeling and helsley has been his own worst enemy this year giving free passes to hitters he walked just 20 hitters last year he's already walked 11 this year and when teams are getting more contact off of you which is happening this year and you're giving them free runners in front of them set you up for failure I mean, go look at the Cleveland game. Two walks. Guess who scored? And it's easy to say it. Just throw strikes. But for some reason, Ryan Helsley just loses the touch on his pitches. Loses the feeling. And all of a sudden, they're all over the place. And I, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a mental thing. I have no idea. But they got to get it figured out. As for the rest of the pin, Jordan Hicks has looked much better in May. Uh, Giovanni Gallegos having a strong season, had just that one blip against the Angels. But outside of that, he's been wonderful. He still makes me nervous every time he comes in. I don't know what it is about Gio. He, he's having a very good season. But when he comes in, I'm just like, oh, boy. I don't know why. I should trust him more, I guess. But um, I don't know. You saw what happened yesterday against the Royals. I was like, here we go. Uh, Henesis Cabrera. Can't can't be consistent. He's up and down all the time. Some days you're like, oh, there he is. Really, really good. And other days you're like, oh, he's terrible. Uh, Chris Stratton, damn glad to meet you. He's been a surprise this season. I've liked Chris Stratton. Had that uh, bad game against the Dodgers, but May has been very, very strong for him. Uh, Drew Verhagen. I'd say Drew Verhagen. I think he's had a pretty decent bounce back season, really. Coming off the injury. And like any pitcher, he'll have a bad day here and there. But overall, I'm not really upset with his production. 
I mean, he's not a closer. He's not an elite relief pitcher. He's just a relief pitcher. And every once in a while, he's going to give up some stuff. That's just it is what it is. Not everybody is going to be Mariano Rivera coming out of the bullpen. Not everybody can do that. Um, since Andre Palante has returned, he's been really good. 1.290 ERA in May, 10 Ks in 11 and a third innings. I'll take that. More of the guy that uh, we saw last year than at the beginning of this year who got sent down. But the bullpen itself, 12 blown saves already this year. Helsley leads them with four. Palante and Hicks each had two. But Palante and Hicks appear to have kind of figured some stuff out and have been really, really good in the month of May. We need Helsley to come around. We got we to figure out what's going on with them because if he can become more, I'm not saying he has to be exactly what he was last year, but more like he was last year than what he's given us this year, what a difference that's going to make. Thank you again for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. We're going to talk some hitting tomorrow, so uh, join me. Uh, we'll get into all of it, okay? Nolan, Goldie, the other Nolan Gorman. We'll, we'll get into all of it uh, coming up tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, there's going to be some bad numbers, and but they're not going to be as bad as you think. Just wait. Be sure to catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast for this upcoming weekend's game in Pittsburgh with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. First pitch will be at 645 St. Louis. Oh, no, no it's not going to be 645. I'm not sure what the time is yet. Don't quote me on that one yet. But they will be in Pittsburgh, that for sure. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Like and subscribe on YouTube to help the channel grow and uh, our love for the Cardinals grow. Let's share it. You're the best fans in baseball for a reason. I'll see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.